that's a lot of work it's a lot of work <laughs> uh, should i go for it um okay welcome everyone thank you so much for coming i know it's dinner time for most of you so we're very excited to have you um our this is one of many panels we have had on the past two weeks. Uh, this will be led by the Bluebells International School students. Um, and the title of this session is Biofuel, a driving force for future. I would like to leave the floor for the students and panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, so please go ahead. Sure, ma'am, thank you. Uh, my name is Ruchi Agarwal and I had this opportunity to work with this wonderful group. Uh, they're going to soon present their uh, work to you, ma'am Mitali. Yes, I'm Mitali Devnath. Yes, uh, same, same here. It was a pleasure working with my group and my team members and interacting with you all also. Yes, now children, you can introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Asra. Um, I study in grade 11. And I'm uh, really excited to be a part of this project. Gauri. Hello, my name is Gauri Vadera and I study in class 11th. Hello, oh. my name is Pranjal Gupta. I study in uh, ninth grade and uh, it has been highly informative to be a part of the research for this project. Tanishka. Hello, my name is Tanishka and I study in grade 11 and uh, it's a nice time to be in this project. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Yamra and I study in grade 9 and I'm really glad to meet you all here today. Hello to everyone present here. My name is Sridhatri Bhattacharya and I study in class 11 and I had a wonderful time spent, uh, I had a wonderful time, uh, they were, uh, you know, I had a wonderful time working in this project, so. Yeah, hello everyone, uh, my name is Mahir Agarwal and I'm in class 9 and I was really glad to be given this opportunity to be a part of this uh, presentation and I hope uh, in the future we can do more projects like this. Uh, greetings to all, I am Sandeep Prinja, uh, I study in grade 9. Uh, I'm really grateful to be a part of this project. Uh, I am really grateful that I'm surrounded with such helpful teachers and such cooperative teammates. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dia and uh, I'm from uh, grade 9th and I had a lot of fun working on the project. My name is Sarivam. I'm from grade 9th I'm glad to be a part of this project. I think we've all introduced ourselves. Ruchi? Yes, ma'am, we can, uh, yes. Tanishka, we can start the presentation chat. Yes. Thank you. Is my screen visible for everyone? Yes, it is. And I think I'm facing some technical issues. So if someone else can share in my place, I think maybe Mahir can share. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, you'll have to stop it. Thank you, Mahir. Yeah, uh, my screen is visible to all. Yes, perfect. Please continue. Hello, everyone. 
We welcome you today on this platform. We, the team from Bluebell School International, will present our research on biofuels. Uh, biofuel is a fuel that is produced through the processes of the biomass from the plant or animal materials and wastes. Rather than the slow geological processes involved in the formation of fossil fuels, such as oil. While there are various ways of making biofuels, most generally use chemical reactions and fermentations uh, and fermentation in heat in order to break down the starch, sugar, and other molecules in the plants. This process is then used as a means of uh, means of preparing biofuels. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next slide, please. Talking about the importance of biofuels, there are important, uh, they are important as they can replace fossil fuels. As a society taking steps towards sustainability, we must reduce the usage of non-eco-friendly fossil fuels. This biomass-made energy is a source for heat, electricity, as well as transportation fuel. On the basis of their sources from the biomass, the biofuels can be categorized into two generations. The first generation of biofuels are produced mainly from the sources that are edible, for example, corn and sugarcane. Biodiesel and bioethanol also fall under this category. For example, biodiesel is prepared from a variety of edible oil resources, such as soybeans, sunflower seeds, rape seeds, coconuts, and peanuts. Ethanol. Ethanol is basically a grain alcohol that can be blended with gasoline and used in motor vehicles. This fuel is mainly produced by sugarcane and corn, whereas bioethanol is a form of ethanol made through an eco-friendly process. It is a renewable source of energy because it is a biomass made from organic material. It is biodegradable and thus less far less, far less toxic. It can be formed by a simple process in which corn is used as a feedstock for yeast and yeast uses anaerobic form of respiration when instead of converting sugars to energy and carbon dioxide, it is converted to carbon dioxide and bioethanol. It can also be produced through fermentation under controlled conditions. Biogas. Biogas is a mixture of gases primarily consisting of methane and carbon dioxide which are produced from raw materials such as agricultural waste. It is an environment-friendly, renewable source of energy. It is produced in a process named anaerobic digestion, where the organic matter such as food, animal, and plant waste is broken down by microorganisms in the absence of oxygen. Also, methane is a combustible gas and is used for cooking. It can also be harmful to the environment, as high levels of methane can reduce the amount of oxygen in air. In this case, biogas converts the harmful methane gas produced during decomposition into less harmful carbon dioxide gas. Currently, there are 56 operational biogas plants in India in the three states of Maharashtra, Kerala, and Karnataka. India's production of biogas is quite small, but a village in the state of Gujarat in India for the past 15 years is India's largest biogas producer. Biofuel in different countries. So biofuel, biofuel has been uh, has been produced um, in different countries on a very large scale. And now we will talk about all of those countries one by one. So first, uh, first time I have been speaking for biofuel in India. So the Indian government has recognized the capacity of indigenous feedstock production for this fuel production. In the India has introduced policies which are centered around which are centered around increasing the production of bioethanol using sugar containing materials like sugar beet, sweet sorghum, etc., and starch containing materials like corn and damaged food grain that are unfit for human consumption. Recognizing the lack of capital in the sector, the government has mobilized the viability funding gap scheme worth 5,000 crore for second generation bioethanol refineries. India also targets a 20% increase in biofuel production till 2023 to 2024. Through various domestic and international initiatives in the biofuels industries in the last few years, India has reiterated its inclination to explore biosolutions. Biofuel in France. France produces biofuel in different forms. In the European Union, France is one of the largest producers of bioethanol. 
The production of bioethanol from sugar beet has been going on in France since many years. It has become a traditional industry. The next form is ETBE, which is ethyl tertiary butyl ether. It is obtained from sugar beet, wheat, and subproducts of starch industry. The next form is RME, which is rapeseed methyl esters. Methyl esters are produced mainly from rapeseed, and France is one of the biggest rapeseed producer in Europe. Vegetable oil or what is derived such as esters can be directly used in diesel. Up to 5% of vegetable oil is blended in diesel fuel, but now it has increased to 7%. Every other diesel car driver in France uses a fuel that contains this biocomponent. Until 2004, it was not allowed to blend the alcohol bioethanol directly on conventional fuels. It is first converted into ETBE before it's blended in gasoline. As we can see, France's biofuel production depends upon the first generation sources of biofuel. Biofuel in USA. USA is the largest producer of ethanol and biodiesel. Now, that is because USA is the largest producer of corn, followed by China, Brazil, etc., which is the primary ingredient required for creating ethanol as well as biodiesel. About 90 million acres of American land has been devoted towards the corn plantation. Furthermore, in 2020, USA had produced 346 million metric tons of corn, which is a huge amount, and it also makes it the largest exporter of corn in the world. Also, USA is right now thinking of developing cellulose biofuel and biofuel from algae. But both of these processes require extra steps which lead to more energy being utilized in comparison to what we get. Now, what I mean by cellulose biofuel is that different kinds of grass which can grow quickly are used for creating biofuel, but still it is not commercially viable. Talking about this process, algae can actually multiply very fast and that is really beneficial for the production of biofuel. However, extra steps like requiring a lot of, however, extra steps like collecting algae from the different water bodies and also removing those impurities, it requires a lot of energy and scientists are still finding a way to make biofuel from algae more efficient. Biofuel in Japan. Japan sources more than 90% of its ETBE from a single plant in Texas, which converts about 500 million liters of Brazilian sugarcane-based ethanol every year, and a large amount from US corn-based ethanol too. Importing in such large quantities is not economically viable as Japan moves towards long-term biofuel goals. Japan, pref Japan prefers ETBE for blending in gasoline as it is more effective than bioethanol in reducing emissions and has low energy consumption. Japan is also expanding production of biodiesel from sources like algae and palm oil waste to reduce dependence of bioethanol imports from Brazil. Drawbacks of producing first generation biofuel. Almost burden on agricultural resources. Almost half of the corn production grown in USA is used for making ethanol, which is forcing farmers to take up more land and fresh water. Only 80% of purified water is available for us for drinking, and if we start growing food for biofuel, it will force farmers to take up more land for cultivation of corn required for biofuel, and this cultivation will require high amounts of fresh water, which may lead to a scarcity of clean drinking water in the future. Due to high use of pesticides in the field for production of biofuel crops, it will also lead to crop changing patterns. Now let's compare the energy consumed and the energy produced. So corn is only able to absorb 0.25% of sunlight and 6,600 calories are used for turning corn into biofuel, while in return, we only get 5,130 calories, which leads to a 22.3% energy loss. Almost 5 to 10% of the energy utilized by USA every year is fulfilled by biofuel like ethanol and biodiesel. Now, this does not only lead to the usage of much food and extreme amounts of energy, but also the increasing demand of biofuel due to the exhausting fossil fuels has also caused an increase in prices for corn, which makes it really difficult for the citizens to buy corn. What are the consequences that affect the environment? Let's discuss. Every year, 10 million tons of food is wasted in France, and within that, a huge amount of rapeseed, sugar beet, and wheat crops are wasted in order to produce biofuel. Water pollution is a serious problem due to the chemical and industrial effluents that are used in the production of first-generation biofuel. 
Shifting agriculture practices to incorporate more biofuel crops will affect the water quantity as well as the water quality. Converting the woodlands into wheat or rapeseed fields may lead to soil erosion and in European Union itself, the soil erosion affects about 7.2% of the total agricultural land and leads to 1.25 billion euro loss in food crops productivity. Energy crops such as water hyacinth can cover and choke lakes and provide a breeding ground for mosquitoes due to the large leaves which causes water stagnation. Let's understand the competition between food and energy crops. It has been estimated that in the future, France will face a competition between food and energy crops and that this will occur even before all the fallow areas are required. As it is economically attractive, more farmers will grow bio crops which will lead to monoculture growing of the same crops on the same piece of land for a longer period of time, it will reduce the nutrients in the soil. Biofuel production also affects the food supply because farmers are being encouraged to grow fuel crops. Since the production of first generation biofuel comes with a lot of drawbacks, therefore we propose that producing biofuel from food waste might be a more viable option. In country like India, where there's a lot of agricultural and food waste generated every day, we must do something about it. The daily organic waste production in Delhi amounts to 4,810 tons, which are disposed of in landfills or water bodies, along with the inorganic and non-biodegradable waste. Decomposition of this organic waste produces harmful gases like methane. Therefore, our group decided to recycle vegetable waste and form biofuel from it. To start this process, the first thing is to collect solid food waste from vegetable markets and then separate it from inorganic waste. As in this process, we will need only organic waste. Next is to blend this organic waste and create a paste of it. After that, what is left over is mainly sugar and fibers, which when mixed with water and yeast will break down larger molecules from it. After some time, the resulting liquid is filtered and fermented, having yeast making the oil from it. Then by ultrasound treatment, we finally get the fuel we need, which is diesel and glycerin. On the right side of the slide, one can also see the picture of it in which the light liquid, that is diesel, has completely separated by glycerine, that is the dark colored liquid at the bottom. The resulting fuel is then separated using a separating funnel. The timeline is as follows. Phase one, it is collecting food waste and separation of organic material in early April. After that, in mid-April, process of extraction and adding water and fungus will begin, followed by fermentation and ultrasound treatment by the end of April. As it has been previously mentioned, the aim of this project is to steer ourselves towards a more self-sufficient lifestyle. And hence, we present to you our idea of a do-it-yourself biofuel. Biodiesel can be brewed from waste oil or fats, which can be obtained from our neighborhood. The idea is to use up the waste materials and formulate them into something useful. The requirements for, the, for making of this biofuel are a stainless steel, steel reactor tank, a wash, tank, wash station to remove the co-products and containers for storing the resulting fuel. The purpose of using cooking oil is its use as a common kitchen essential worldwide. Hence, it can be procured easily. However, we aim at utilizing used cooking oil since its reuse can prove to be carcinogenic, which means it can cause cancer. The collection of used cooking oil will be done from our neighborhood. Let us now take a look at the process of making the fuel consisting of two steps. The first is the methoxide reaction. A catalyst is added to methanol, either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. The reaction will be exothermic, that is heat will be released. This is the reason why a steel reactor tank is advised instead of a plastic container. The second reaction after having achieved a successful methoxide reaction includes mixing the methoxide with oil. The molecules get agitated and in this way, 
80% biodiesel can be produced with the rest 20% being co-products which can be drained. In a previous research, the optimum biodiesel yield was 88% at methoxide to oil ratio of 6 is to 1, reaction for 60 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. Hence, we can replicate the procedure at a smaller scale and then shift to a larger one. Now the question is, why methanol? Methanol is the simplest alcohol, which is the chemical building block for hundreds of everyday products like plastics, paints, etc. Similarly, it is also a clean energy resource to fuel cars, trucks, boilers. Upon reacting with methanol, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide gives sodium methoxide or potassium methoxide as mentioned before. Methanol is advised since it easily dissolves in these catalysts. The timeline of our project is divided into three phases. The first phase deals with the collection of used or waste oil and fats from our neighborhood. We plan to be able to achieve this by ending March. The second phase of our project is likely to last till mid-April, where we aim to make the biofuel by the aforementioned process in lab laboratories. The last phase of our project focuses on testing the efficiency of the fuel and uh, determining, its determining its calorific value by the end of April. We would also like to determine the efficiency of the fuel in comparison with the fuels that are currently in use. In society, if alternatives of biofuels are blended, the plight of the generations to come will be mended. We hope that we have succeeded in our endeavor to give you an overview of biofuel production. We must understand that since fossil fuels are depleting, we have no other choice apart from using alternate fuels, and we believe that biofuels are definitely a promising avenue for the same. With all the efforts from around the world, we hope to take our project on biofuels to greater heights. The house is now open for discussion. There is a question in the chat box. Who would like to take it? Have you all read the question in the chat box, everyone? Ruchika, can you hear me? Ruchi? Yes, ma'am, definitely. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, Asra, so, would you so, like to uh, tell us uh, an estimate of the cost uh, if, you're, if you're reusing the cooking oil? Um, so, first of all, uh, since we're reusing the oil that we're using, um, to clarify, we're using the oil that is used for frying. Because uh, whenever we deep fry something, we use oil in much uh, greater volumes. So that is the sort of oil that we're trying to collect from the neighborhood. And of course, that would be, um, in short, free of cost. Apart from that, uh, we will be needing methanol. Methanol is a chemical that is readily available um, at chemical stores. And um, we need large containers which uh, might um, which might not exactly pose as a problem but yes we still need to acquire them so i don't think it's much expensive but i think an estimate would be around um, two or three thousand i believe thank you azra i just want to follow up by saying that i can't believe that uh, you all are school students i thought we are in amidst students who are already in college first year undergrad but this is amazing that uh, you are already doing what we call a comparative study or a comparative analysis uh, where we compare different countries, the processes that, that uh, you know, is followed and I am trained as a comparative analysis. So you have already started that training much younger and kudos to your teachers and your team who have already started this, uh, you know, trend of doing uh, comparative analysis. Um, as you go along, such an important topic and such a topic that can go across different uh, countries and many people can, you know, take, uh, make uh, use of it. I was uh, recently in a, Jasmine and I were recently in a panel discussion on algae and biofuels. So it's great to see a cross collaboration between the two topics uh, that has come up. Uh, I have a question on uh, this topic and the SDGs. 
um, any links, I know there are specific links to climate uh, related work, but any other sustainable development goal links that you can draw from uh, this, your research? Yeah, any one of you can take the question. Would you like uh, Radhika to repeat the question? So, Am I audible to everyone? Hello, can you hear me, Radhika? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. yeah. So my question is, how is this biofuel related to the sustainable development goals? And goals. Any idea on uh, which goals are we targeting when we uh, do this research and a practical application of uh, biofuels? I think uh, this particular project is aiming for uh, sustainable development goal number 12, responsible production and consumption. Great. And SDG 7 also, clean and green energy. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Ma'am, I would also like to point out that uh, I think one of... There's the one question from Jasmine. Sorry, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I would also like to point out that there's one uh, one point in SDGs where it says economic growth. So I think since biofuel production from uh, vegetable waste and cooking used cooking oil especially is cheap. So I think it also aims for economic growth. Fantastic. Fantastic to see all these uh, cross linkages and I never thought of economic growth. So I was always tending towards like climate uh, related work. So it's nice that all these connections are coming up. There's a question from Jasmine in the chat box, which says, how do you view the process of testing the biofuel? Yes, ma'am. So the group has already uh, thought about. Um, so uh, yeah, Astra, uh, why don't you only tell testing the uh, efficiency of the fuel? Uh, yes, ma'am. So as for testing the uh, specifically testing the efficiency of the fuel, uh, we first uh, we've already read about uh, calorific value, which is the amount of heat that gets released when you uh, combust a particular fuel. So I'm not specifically sure about it, but I have heard of a term of uh, something known as a bomb calorie meter, I think. Uh, we have uh, been uh, talking about it in our physics practicals as well. So I believe that would in some way maybe would help us, um, you know, determine the calorific value. And um, in that, once we determine that, we can also compare it with the calorific values of other biofuels that are being currently that are currently being used as alternates to fossil fuels, etc. You all can ask for more questions. You have more audience. We have a couple of people joining from uh, Telangana, probably teachers. Hi. Thank you for joining, Srinivas. Any questions from your end, Jasmine? Any more questions? Meanwhile, we are waiting for question. I just want to compliment one more thing which I noticed is that either I've seen projects that are purely theoretical and they end at the theory part, which I feel doesn't do enough justice to sustainable development goals because the goals are very solution oriented. And how are we going to drive towards the solution we shouldn't stop with just looking at what the you know what the research is saying and but also going towards the solution and the solution seems to be uh, very i guess approachable or understandable in this case so it's uh, it's amazing that you have taken that whole trajectory and are moving towards the solution component i really value that part are there any plans once you reach to the like later, like the last phase of the project? Are there any plans to study what you came up with and maybe having like a little, uh, not on a publishing level, but sharing your results with everyone to be able to scale that up if, if any other communities want to do the same? 
uh, posted a question here right you can hear me yeah children did discuss about you know crop uh, crop fields uh, used for uh, biofuels it will the harmful uh, you know how the this will affect the economy and all and all i understand that uh, in spite of you know there are certain crops which are not uh, there are certain uh, yeah, crops which are not food crops but can be used for the biofuel production right uh, but in spite of all this you know we know the benefits we are trying to work on it and yet biofuels are not gaining so much popularity and uh, what can be the reasons why we are not moving at a very fast pace if they are so good right they're going to replace fossil fuels and we said they don't release as much of harmful gases as the others this is what children have researched on so why do you think children that we are not really and that this biofuel is not gaining so much popularity have you thought about it you research so much on it Yes, Tanishka. Yes, Sam. I would like to take your question. I feel that uh, when we first hear the term biofuel, a lot of uh, people think that it might be expensive and it takes food crops and all those things. But the main purpose of our research and presentation was to bring forth the point that biofuel production is not that expensive. It is actually very cheap and affordable and it can be a very uh, environmental friendly process. So I think that is one of the reasons they are not gaining so much popularity. And we uh, we try to raise that point in our presentation. Do you think there is something to do with the calorific value? The you know, and if it is used in the cars, just benefits uh, how the engines will have to be changed or whatever. I'm just giving uh, a few hints to you if you can think on those terms right maybe they don't release energy so fast as the others uh, like uh, maybe lpg like C cng and uh, so uh, let's also look as, as to what are the impediments i will say in the use of biofuels right while i agree percent that we should be moving towards biofuels now yeah I, uh, I also Can't. feel that maybe the fact that the government subsidizes uh, the fossil fuel industry as well, like to a decent extent, like we're trying to move towards clean energy, but at the same time, we are still subsidizing fossil fuels in various countries across the world. So this makes it harder for a system to transit from the traditional fossil fuels, which are used in cars and which are, which are a major pollutant in our system towards cleaner energy. So this is something that is holding many companies back. And uh, like uh, Ma'am mentioned that it requires a drastic change in the system where uh, we would need a different sort of an infrastructure for our cars, uh, which can work on biofuel, right? So uh, this is one of the factors I feel that is preventing us to move towards uh, towards biofuel, uh, exactly. And uh, in renewable energy sources, we're also considering solar, uh, solar energy and wind energy. So this overshadows biofuel, uh, the biofuel industry as well. This is what I feel that uh, as a person who, who is not too aware about the uh, energy industry, so the common man feels that the renewable resources such as the solar and the wind energy is all that exists uh, in the name of clean energy. So I feel that raising awareness about biofuel is also vital. Uh, as uh, while while the change begins with one person, it requires a group to a group to really bring about that change in the system. So more awareness about biofuel must also be raised. It's the same. Anybody else? I think we could research more on this. Yeah. Anybody yes, else? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, like you mentioned, the point for calorific value, and I think we raised we raised this point in our PPT that uh, right now the amount of uh, amount of energy that is required for producing the biofuels is like way less than we are getting back. So that that can be one point because then there's no then there's no profit in the people for producing biofuel. Second second thing is like uh, fossil fuels are being exhausted, but at the moment no one feels uh, no one feels like need need to get more and more alternative sources like solar energy has also been in a hype for like for the past year or for the past two years so like Pranchu mentioned that this kind of overshadows biofuels so no one feels like there's any need for producing biofuels but as 
as you move as you move in time and um, the fossil fuels eventually get exhausted after 5 to 10 years then we will actually feel the need of producing biofuel so uh, the point of our presentation was basically to uh, look for, like to yeah, get the people's attention for a vision of like 5 to 10 years in the future I Jasmine, could you repeat your question? We missed your question. Sorry. Yeah, no worry. I was just wondering if I know that you're doing different processes to get to like testing. And I was wondering if there was like a last stage of not on a publishing level, but sharing those results that you found so it can be used in other communities and maybe it can be scalable to a bigger community. So children, do you want to publish a paper on this? Come on, Jasmine is curious to know that. Um, you think we are ready? Yes, Tanishka. I would like to answer your question. Um, uh, as you could see in our presentation, we not only focused on the theory part, but as well as the practical part. So we aim to conduct the practical part and then uh, compare it with the theory part and then raise more awareness about biofuels because our team feels that biofuel is um, is a very important part of our going ahead with the sustainable development goals. So I think that would be an ending point for our uh, research. Yeah. Also, ma'am, um, if I may add to what you're saying, um, in the next uh, level of this project, we will definitely involve communities because uh, they are talking about using the food waste that are created in communities. So now we'll definitely be approaching the communities and because uh, we'll be asking them to, you know, uh, separate their food waste and segregate and provide us with raw materials, definitely they should also get something as a reward. So that's how we will involve communities and also um, a few NGOs to work with who are going to help us um, obtain our raw materials as well and create events both. We would love to see the results and everything that you're working. I think that that should be shared with everyone in case they want to reach out to you and you can help them either replicate or, or help them start their own biofuel project. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a very doable project within small communities. Yes, children, you agree with me? Even if not on a large scale, and what fuel are we talking about? Only fuel used in household uh, purposes, or fuel used for the car, or fuel used for generating electricity, which is the main form of energy that is used. So you, this could uh, actually lead to a lot of exploration further. And you can see how a small community setup can be done in different ways. So what are the next steps now? Uh, where are things going? How is the practical application? What are you thinking? And what are some of the challenges that will come your way? And you are very apprehensive that, okay, so what? If this happens, then you know what is going to happen to our project? So anything that you are anticipating that can go wrong or right? Ma'am, I think the biggest apprehension was to come back to school <laughs> in person and to be able to use the laboratories of school. So I think that is taken care of and other children can add more to that. They can they are very optimistic. They can yeah. always, they have never have apprehension. They're very yeah, positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So first hurdle is done. You are back in school. Uh, I just wanted to suggest something that I've written in the chat. Uh, sorry, I pasted the wrong thing. But this ICSD, International Conference for Sustainable Development, it's an international conference. And maybe you can organize a panel uh, with some New Jersey schools who are focusing on New York schools, focusing on biofuels, have a panel, maybe work with some NGOs 
it is a international conference so there will be many people from various places and it's in september it's a free conference uh, for everyone to attend so i would suggest to uh, attend the conference and earlier on we used to think that oh students you know this is good for college students but now after seeing your presentation and after seeing our how the youth conference is going i think you are more than ready to attend the conference participate in all the sessions there given the timing and uh, register and share your ideas because if you have reached this level i am sure there will be other schools and other students who can benefit from your research at least the journey they might look at other avenues and they might look at other processes and it might be helpful to have some sort of a dialogue going uh, so that's some and again we no one has to it used to be in at columbia university this conference in september during un general assembly and many of the un delegates used to attend it now they have made it uh, online which is the best part and it it is a, it's a global conference so it will work with the india time as well so i think it will be another for me as a researcher it always helps if i discuss the question and discuss my approaches with other researchers so that they can give me feedback and say hey well what about this idea what about that so it always helps me to proceed on to next things that are not really thought of so this might be that conference where you can get some more ideas uh, as we go along and when you have your application or abstract sent definitely let me know so that i can share it with some school districts that i know who will be eager to participate uh, as a audience in your in your panel sure ma if none of us have any more questions any questions the sudha rani with us also and we have p rakesh so should we all sign off now what do you say radhika um uh, yes i think uh, given where we are we need to have dinner and we need to get on and uh, so good luck with your with your research work and i i can only say that uh, i am so honored to be a part of you know this uh, group and uh, see your presentation and i wish i had a group like this when i was in school but it's okay never too late i'm here learning from you now so that's fantastic and uh, uh, we can you know definitely be in touch and uh, keep us updated with your research work so that we can share it across uh, different platforms yes. and uh, let's definitely continue this uh, work going forward jasmine anything before we end thank you so much we, i i learned so much from you and it's very exciting to see such a good presentation with um great background information and see how you're so confident in the information you give Thank you. 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 Thank you.